Hello and welcome to Gravit. This tutorial is aimed at introducing you to the functionality of Gravit and giving you the skills to get started with your first design and become a part of the Gravit community. To begin, let's discuss the workspace. This area is the hub of Gravit and is the location you will always land at when you visit Gravit. From here, you can view and edit your profile, including organization-based settings. To access organizations you're already a part of, you simply have to select the name and you'll be taken to the workspace for this organization. If you're wanting to create an organization, simply select the button, type in a name, and choose whether or not you want to add an email different to your own. From there, you can add new users and create organization-specific designs. The main part of the workspace is to be taken up with your designs, as well as the different ways you can view your designs via the top panel or the shared designs on the right. The final key section of the workspace is the Gravit navigation. This allows you to access the rest of the Gravit website. While I won't be stepping through the entire website, I would like to now show you some of the key areas of the Gravit webpage. The first is the support section. This gives you access to the key areas of assistance, such as video tutorials, written documentation, our blog, and the community section. The community is an area where users can interact, share ideas, and help one another out through a topic-based system. To start engaging with the community, either create a new topic or enter an existing one and add your input. The other two key areas worth mentioning is both the Marketplace and Discover. These two pages work in a very similar way to essentially allow the user to view and filter through designs. The difference is that Discover is an area that can be posted in very simply by changing your design to public, whereas the Marketplace is an area where designs must be approved by the Gravit team and are able to be used by other Gravit members. Now let's get into the designer. To begin, return to the workspace and select Create a Design. Within the next view, there is the option to create a custom design by size, use a predefined size based on type, or use a design template. This time, I am going to create a custom size design at the default size. Now that we have entered the designer, I will now try to run over all of the key features within Gravit. To get started, to either import or export files within Gravit, you simply need to go to File, and you will find both options available with varied file types accepted. Another quick feature I would like to mention is our view options. This is found via view and you can select one of the four options. The two most often used is full view or output view, which only shows what will be exported and nothing outside of the artboard. Now moving to the design area for a quick overview. On the top, you will find the toolbar with your most essential tools. On the right, you have the format panel, which is selection based. This means that when no object is selected, it will display canvas settings. Finally, if you select the Layers button on the top right, a Layers panel will appear on the left. For the key purpose of this tutorial, I would like to focus on the toolbar and all the options available. You will firstly notice the Zoom options with drop down to specific zooms, and the Fit All option which allows you to set the artboard in the constraints of the canvas. Following along, you have the option to swap between the Pan tool, shortcut being H, or the Zoom tool. It is worth noting that scroll-based movement has also now been made available in Gravit. Now onto drawing. Within Gravit, we have many predefined shapes that can be drawn. To draw any of these, all you have to do is go to the drop-down box and for example, select rectangle. From here, you will click and drag to draw. Once drawn, along with most other content types, you can use the format panel on the side to alter things such as fill and border color or the opacity of the shape. As an addition to the fill option, you can also customize the fill to be a gradient rather than a solid color, for example. Positioning shapes in Gravit is easy. We have two key ways to position a shape. Firstly, you can click and move around using the smart grid snaps to align it to the canvas or to another shape in the design. The other option is to use the align settings on the format pedal. These allows you to completely center it within the canvas or move it to the sides. You also have the capabilities on the format panel to make much more precise changes to shapes. You can change the position of a shape or image precisely from here, as well as being able to change the shape's height and width either separately or in proportion to one another using the lock icon. We also have a sophisticated pen and bezagon tool available in Gravit that allows you to draw all types of custom shapes. To use the pen tool, simply select it in the toolbar and click to start, find an endpoint, and hold to add curve. Once finished with the shape, to close, either double click the start point or exit the pen tool and select close path. The next feature along is text. It's 
very simple to add text in Gravit. Simply select the tool and click it in the desired location on the canvas. Once active, simply type the desired text and edit the style, size and justification to your preference. Under the media tool, there is a number of options and these are the following from top to bottom. You can bring an image in that you have already uploaded, upload a new image, use a pre-installed image or icon in from our library, or source content from the marketplace. Following this is the edit feature. This can be used on any shape, path or image in Gravit and allows you to do many edits based on the type of content you have selected. It can also be entered by double clicking the content. As an example, it allows you to add curved corners to rectangles. The transform tool works in a similar manner. You simply select the desired shape, click transform in the toolbar and you can make changes based on the type, such as rotation or skewing. The next tool along is the knife tool, which allows you to slice up content. To use, simply click and drag over a shape or line. To add a curve, you can also click and drag while holding option. Next, I will use my recently split shape to showcase our Boolean operations. We currently have four options available that will do different things to the shapes. We have the options of union, difference, intersection, or subtract. Here you will see all of these being demonstrated via changes through the format panel. The final tool I would like to showcase is the clip tool. I will use our recently split shape as the base and upload an image from the media tool. To clip, simply select both the image and the shape and select clip. Finally, you can also use the split function to undo all of this work and return everything to normal. We at Gravit hope you have found this tutorial useful and hope you tune in to the next edition.